Thanks, I've done that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in today's section. This is the West African section for the Global Conference on UNSL 1325, Localization of UNSL and Women's Voices. I am Abiodou Essiet from the Nations Unies. My name is Abiodou Essiet, President de l'initiative de jeunes conseillères africaines. J'aimerais remercier nos partenaires qui nous ont aidés à la planification de cette session. Cameroon, Women Peace Builders Network, also from Cameroon. Le réseau des femmes du Cameroun également. Alors, pour cette session, nous allons nous concentrer sur la résilience, la localisation de la résolution 1325 du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies. On se rend renforcer la résilience, les systèmes de soutien, les politiques et les capacités des femmes à atténuer les conflits à la base. Il est important pour nous de savoir que toutes les politiques internationales que nous avons, nous devons nous concentrer à les localiser parce que ces politiques sont pour qu'elles puissent servir les personnes à la base et pour qu'elles puissent les servir, elles doivent les connaître. On doit également renforcer la résilience pour que la politique vraiment fonctionne. Nous allons écouter plusieurs panélistes de l'Afrique de l'Ouest sur leur connaissance sur ce thème au niveau de la localisation de la résolution 1325 du Conseil de sécurité. Nous savons que cela a commencé il y a 20 ans. Nous sommes 20 ans plus tard après... Euh, cette politique. Certaines l'ont localisée. Au Nigeria, nous avons deux ou trois gouvernements locaux qui ont établi des plans d'action locaux pour cette politique au Nigeria. Donc, nous entendrons davantage à nos panélistes sur comment ils, misent, ils mettent en œuvre au niveau local ces politiques. Alors, merci beaucoup de s'être rejoint. Nous, nous avons l'interprétation en français également pour ceux qui se joignent à nous des pays francophones et l'anglais pour les autres. Alors, sur ce panel, ma co-modératrice aujourd'hui est Ada. Ada, est-ce que vous êtes avec nous? Alors, elle se joindra à nous. Nous avons également une rapporteur, Sonia, qui... We'll be discussing this morning. It's morning for us in West Africa. It's evening in the rest part of the world. Thank you for all for joining. So briefly, on to talk about the agenda and some of the housekeeping rules. Details. It's a rencontre Zoom. And if you do not wish to have your image on the recording, please turn off your camera by clicking the video camera icon on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. The video is off when there is a dialogue line to the video camera. By staying in this section, you are going to be recorded and having your image and any comment you speak accessible to the public. All chats, including private chats, are recorded. Please turn off your microphones. When you are not speaking, turn off your mic. Click on the microphone icon and so that the dialogue stroke goes through it. Click again to turn it on when you want to speak. If your mic is on and you are not speaking, the text support will turn it off. So to access the chat, click on the square speech bubble along the bottom of the screen. Invite participants to post, inviting you all to post an introduction on the chat, and you can also join the conversation by sharing your views and recommendations on the chat box. Screenshot will be taken and posted on Cody's social media account as well when your videos are heard. So let's work together to have an enjoyable conference by turning off your mic when you're not speaking practicing mutual respect, listening attentively, giving appreciation, not put down. Remembering that our personal experience is valid. Que nos expériences personnelles sont toutes valides et non 
universel. Si la section inclut une des discussions ouvertes, gardez vos commentaires clairs et concis de façon à ce que euh, tout puisse parler. Alors, bienvenue. De, merci de se joindre à nous à cette session de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Alors, pour l'heure du jour, nous avons les indications qui ont fait une introduction à la session. Alors, nous aurons notre première panéliste qui parlera de la localisation de la réalisation 1325 du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies. Donc, notre première panéliste parlera du concept de la paix et la localisation de, des politiques. Et nous aurons une période de questions à la suite. Notre deuxième panéliste parlera également du besoin de euh, réseaux de soutien. Ensuite, nous aurons une période de questions. et un partage de points de vue de la part des panélistes. Ensuite, notre dernier paneliste parlera de la résilience au niveau de la base, parlant de leur propre expérience. Ensuite, nous, aurions, nous aurons encore une autre période de questions et nous ouvrirons une conversation, stratégie, recommandation. Nous allons également avoir des commentaires au niveau des défis et opportunités et au travail de plutôt. Merci beaucoup à toutes et tous de se joindre à nous. Je vais maintenant passer la parole à Ada qui va nous présenter notre première panéliste. Ada, est-ce que vous êtes là? Je n'ai um, pas vu power Ada encore et je, je crois qu'elle a peut-être des problèmes de perte de courant. Alors, je vais présenter la première panéliste. Alors, je vais présenter notre... Alors, Christelle est une militante de droits des femmes. Elle a, a fondé l'association Hope for the Needy. Elle travaille à renforcer le leadership et la force de la voix des femmes. Response to prevention of gender-based violence. Our initiative have engaged over 30,000 youths and women communities across Cameroon using workshops, income generation, debate, creative heart to address gender-based violence. She initiated a piece of peace concept through which she has engaged over 400 grassroots women leaders across Cameroon around initiatives that address structural inequalities that prevent women effective participation in peace building. Bill has received many national and international awards and fellowship, including the High National Award of Excellence for Outstanding Leadership Skill, Empowerment of Youth in Cameroon, National Award of Excellence as Leader of Best Child Result Oriented NGO in Cameroon. Bill is one of the discussions invited by the Federal Foreign Office in the Berlin that contributed ideas to the development of German third national action plan on the women, peace and security agenda. Please welcome Christina Bill to the platform. Thank you. Thank you very much for the warm welcome and for this opportunity to talk about localizing uh, UN Security Council Resolution 13. la résolution 1325 du Conseil de sécurité des Nations Unies et le concept de la paix. Je vais commencer par parler de ce qu'est la paix. Avant de réellement pouvoir localiser le concept de paix, on doit comprendre que la paix est un conseil analogique. Ce qui veut dire que le, ça signifie différentes choses pour différentes personnes, différentes organisations, différentes nations, différentes communautés. Donc, pour une... Nous devons comprendre que pour chaque communauté, pour chaque individu, pour chaque communauté, 
and in every context, peace has its own conceptualization. Sometimes the conceptualizations of peace is, around, is centered around the actions taken for peace. For example, if peace is seen as no hunger, every action will be taken to ensure that there is no hunger. Probably this is also linked to the conceptualization of peace by Gatung, who says there is positive peace and negative peace. And insists that we acknowledge the presence of injustice perpetrated by social systems, such that sometimes, even when direct violence is absent, peace is still non-existent. So maybe localizing the concept of peace would, it would, would um, encompass looking at what peace means to different communities, to those grassroots. What is peace to a grassroots woman leader? What does she advocate for? She leaves the realities of her communities, the realities of her community, the everyday reality, the poverty, the gender-based violence, the local actions she takes to mediate conflicts, uh, the, the structural barriers, the norms, cultures, and ill practices she has to overcome every day before she can even find herself in that space. The struggle to identify who she really is. So before we can really have localized peace, we need to understand first Avant of all... Avant de pouvoir avoir la une paix localisée, on doit comprendre les luttes des femmes et des communautés. Nous ne pouvons pas non plus essentialiser les femmes en tant qu'une catégorie homogène dans ces communautés, ces communautés de base, par exemple. Nous avons les, fa les femmes qui luttent au niveau de leur identité dans les pays. Il y a la question de nationalité, les enjeux de l'élite nationale. Donc, nous avons ces différentes luttes et différents contextes également qui doivent être analysés avant d'arriver à une réelle image de la paix. Et la paix qui vient de la base, qui est spécifique à un contexte et qui prend les considérations spécifiques des cultures, des valeurs, des pratiques locales et des croyances locales, c'est ce type de paix que la résolution 1325 cherche à promouvoir. Ce type de paix qui est basé sur euh, l'humanité et qui inclut des valeurs de tolérance, respect, égalité. Maintenant, comment est-ce qu'on on peut localiser les concepts de 1325? Premièrement, nous savons que cette résolution est célébrée comme une résolution incroyable qui a changé le visage de la paix, les femmes et la sécurité. Et Dieu bénisse les femmes qui ont fait tous les efforts pour amener à cette résolution si importante pour les femmes, la paix et la sécurité dans le monde. Comment est-ce que les communautés peuvent s'approprier ce concept? Est-ce que la paix au niveau de la paix de la base arrive à cause de 1325 ou est-ce que c'est 1325 qui forme la paix au niveau, à la base ou est-ce que la paix à la base... Localizing, the, the localizing 1325 and the concept of peace means that actions at the grassroots should shape the picture of 1325 in the global landscape of women, peace and security. This means actions that are grounded on community communitarian peace, actions that are grounded on cultures, realization or accepting, acknowledging the different cultures, the different practices, the different strengths, the different uh, um, uh, uh, reasons why women engage in peace building at the grassroots level. So bringing together these different initiatives at the grassroots, which are sometimes less recognized in the global landscape of women, peace and security, would truly mean a true localization of 1325 for women to effectively participate in peace building. This entails capacities that are, 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 are built, women who own their stories, women who can tell their stories. So if their capacities are built in a way that they own their initiatives and can tell their stories, maybe this initiative they carry out at the grassroots level, which I believe is what truly shapes The, the picture of peace at the global level is what truly shapes or, or, or leads to the realization of 1325 
if those actions are given that kind of recognition, I'm sure that that is what localization of 1325 would entail. This means that issues such as gender-based violence, which is one of the reasons why 1325 came into practice, is one of the issues that should be addressed at community levels if we truly have to, 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 to localize the concept of 1325. GBV, for example, blurs the picture of peace for women. Patriarchy, deep-seated in communities, especially in West Africa and other African nations. Women are still seen as people for whom peace building can do something, not we people who own their own processes of reforms and can shape the, process, the face of peace building. And one of, this, one of the things that continue to make them to be seen as people for whom peace building can do something than people who are doing something to peace building are these aspects of gender-based violence and patriarchy. But how do, can we address gender-based violence and patriarchy so that women can own the process, their processes of reforms? A hungry woman could hardly really talk for herself. A community living in abject poverty may surely not really have a voice. Economic Sorry, did you lose me? Hello? Yeah, so economic, economic dependence would obviously prevent, we, economic dependence would prevent women from having voice and agency when it comes to realizing the purpose of 1325. So if 1325 has to be lo localized, these realities on the ground, those cultural norms, those gender, those practices that hinder, that hinder women from realizing their, 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 their full potentials, those actions that limit their voices, those actions that see them as victims, or those scenarios where they are continuously being presented as victims, other than owners of their own processes of change and reform, other than owners of what peace means to them, other, other than those people who can tell stories of their needs, priorities, and concerns when it comes to peace building, those structural inequalities that prevent them from realizing who they are must be addressed before we can truly say that they own 1325 and can drive the realization of the purpose of 1325. I've spoken about peace being conceptualized differently. Recently, of recent, there's been a lot of talk about the new wars. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. There, there has been a lot of talk about the new wars, wars that are happening between, in, 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 amongst nations, within nations, other than, in, um, other than between two nations. These wars that happen sometimes are in communities. And sometimes the wars are not just the guns and the knives. Sometimes the wars are battered bodies of women, trauma that is left behind when gender-based, the, the physical acts of gender-based violence have gone. For 1325 to be truly localized, in communities, these other aspects of wars that are not seen with the eyes, but are experienced by the body and felt by the self must be represented in the picture of 1325. So now I'm talking about a recommendation that I'm giving in this scenario is developing, if we should move away from just national action plans to 1325, but developing local action plans, local action plans that pay attention to local realities, local context, local needs, priorities, and concerns of women and girls and communities. Coming up with those local action plans that are owned and driven by women. As such, we'll be moving towards the realization of a UN Security Council Resolution 1325 from now onwards that is from the bottom to the top, that is grounded on local realities, that is grounded on humanity first, which is the peace building approach of women in communities, the concept of human security. So um, I'm also recommending moving away like a new, looking at a new kind of peace, grounding the implementation of 1325 on a new kind of peace that is grounded on promoting equality justice, democracy, and peace. And this kind of equality also considers the fact that women, even at the grassroots, is not just a homogeneous category. There are different 
factors that play in that sexuality, race, and I, that that and th those identities that interplay when it comes to realizing the purpose of 1325. Those silenced voices, the battered bodies, should be represented in that local action plan. That includes trauma healing, identify, uh, allowing for self uh, self identification, self actualization, and self realization. So I'm recommending a new piece, a new piece grounded on human security, grand, grounded on equality, grand, grounded on justice, as the kind of piece needed to realize the purpose of UN Security Council Resolution 1325. I'm looking, I'm looking at building capacities of women at the grassroots level, to, at the grassroots levels, to be able to own and tell their stories. What is peace to them? How does 1325 look? What is the picture of 1325 for this woman in, a commun in the remotest community in my village who believes that she still has the capacity to transform peace building through the everyday mediation processes she leads, through the everyday trauma healing processes she leads? How can her voice be fully placed in the global picture of 1325 through the local action plans, as I propose? I'm also looking at the aspects of building a culture of tolerance among generation, young, the new generation of boys and girls who are able to understand the values of equality, who are able to understand that no person is better than another because of their sexuality or their gender identity. Understanding that we need to work together, boys and girls, to address poverty because to address poverty, because addressing issues of poverty and economic dependence drive the, the implementation or the realization of the purpose of 1325. I will leave my presentation at this point. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian Abe, for you know setting the floor on some of the concepts behind the piece, uh, with major emphasis on the reality on ground for us to be able to domesticate or localize some of this policy. Women are not just homogeneous species. We have different issues, you know, that makes us who we are. And so many other factors needs to be considered when we want to localize, you know, this policy at the local level, thinking about cultural norms and, you know, beliefs that have been heading, you know, women back and that have been impacting in some of those issues around peace. And thanks for you know sharing that concept around community approach towards peace building, which is something we need to really look into, trying to see how we incorporate our own way of keeping peace within the community structure, but in a way that is also empowering to women and also building their capacity in the whole process. You mentioned, you talked about the economic dependency, which is one of the major things that really limits, you know, the impartation or the contribution of women to keep peace keep, keeping if they don't have money you know they are you know they have that limitation to really have their voice heard and all that so it's also important we include things that could empower women in the process of keeping peace building in within the community structure thank you for your presentation we'll really come back to it if you have questions in relation to some of the community approaches that has worked for you in cameroon in ensuring peace building, what are the concepts that you have used, community concept that you have used that we can learn from, from Cameroon. So I would like to open the floor now to some of uh, our participants who want to share their comments or observation concerning this first presentation. You could either raise up your hand or give the thumbs up so that we can ask you to unmute yourself to add to the discussion. We can keep the discussion coming at the chat box and we could go back to that after all the presentation. But let me introduce our second speaker from Nigeria who will be discussing about the need for support system to enhance the UNSR 1325. 
We've talked about the concept of peace, and now there's a need for us to build support system to enhance the localization of this policy. Okay, I can see Nicole's and Hop. Okay. Nicole, can you unmute? Okay. Can you unmute yourself and make your contribution? Nicole? Yes. Go ahead, Hello. please. Hello. Okay. Are you getting? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Lynn Waze of Cameroon. Uh, I want to thank the organizers of this very important. Primero remercier les organisateurs. And especially Christelle for that insightful uh, presentation on the concept of peace and related concept. I just want uh, Christelle, considering that we are undergoing a socio-political uh, situation in Cameroon that undermines this concept of peace and the related concept you just presented. I was uh, hoping you tie down your presentation on some examples from our experiences as Cameroonian women. Because as a Cameroonian woman, woman when I talk today, I talk out of experience. I am uh, uh, participating in this um, uh, conversation from the Northwest region where guns have been raining continuously for the past uh, many days. No electricity, we have to use the generator to light our, to charge our phones and so on and so forth. And again, within the Cameroon context, women have been systematically and deliberately excluded from these peace initiatives. How do you localize, how do you contextualize this concept of peace from your experience as a Cameroonian woman? Okay. Thank you so much, Nicole. I, I will give the, yeah, I'll give the floor to Queen Christiana to answer in just two minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicole, for that very insightful um, um, comment. As a Cameroonian woman from the Northwest region of Cameroon, who's lived the realities of a violent conflict as well, who has been abused, tortured, and insulted as well in different aspects, threatened, kidnapped, to be kidnapped and everything. I can tell you that the first thing is for us to look at the fact that the war in Cameroon did not just start with the ongoing violent conflict. War has been going on in Cameroon. Gender-based violence has been deep-seated for generations. Patriarchy has been the order of the day. Economic dependence, especially for women, has been existing. If we limit the war in Cameroon to have just begun in 2016, or 2001 violence in 2017, we are going to miss out on that that, that, that militarism that exists in presupposed peace time. For Cameroon, there was not, for me, there was no peaceful before to this militarized after. Because the supposed peaceful before in Cameroon, that was before 2017, was characterized by the abused body, gender-based violence in different forms, economic dependence, structural violence that exists in different ways. For the, the concept of peace to be localized in our context in the Northwest region, maybe us the women should shift away from thinking that this war only started in 2017. The war has been going on. And if we could address those issues of gender-based violence that had been existing, that have just been amplified because of the crisis, and have continued to make our voices relegated, have continued to silence the voices of women, if we could start by addressing the war that had been in existence, maybe it can help us to fully conceptualize, to fully localize the concept of peace. We should, we should, we should not look at our exclusion that's only coming from now. But one other thing I know is that when the voices of the people get too loud, the authorities have no choice but to listen. And these voices means that putting, that, that is what, we, what, what I conceptualize as pieces of peace. Like there is no, achieving peace or arriving at peace, it is not a one size fit all approach. What are those vital pieces that make 
an important as that that, that are of very of, of importance to women in communities. What are those pieces? Is it, if it is dialogue in our context, what kind of dialogue? Is it dialogue about battered bodies? Is it dialogue about silenced identities of women? Is it is it dialogue about the trauma, the patriarchy women have suffered from over the years? If we could come together with those different pieces, maybe addressing gender-based violence, addressing this deep-rooted patriarchy, addressing economic... To combat the pa patriarchy that exists today. Et j'aimerais vous féliciter pour ce que vous faites au Cameroun, parce que cette violence, l'intimidation auquel vous êtes assez aujourd'hui, on doit vous habiliter politiquement parlant. Et quand on pense à ces pratiques illégales, ces lois qui nous sont imposées, qui existent depuis des années et qui ne font que promouvoir la violence depuis 2017, quelles sont ces lois qui nous aident à définir cet espace? Chacune de nous, Avec tous ces éléments que, dont j'ai parlé, nous pourrions euh, avoir la paix, nous pourrions, avoir, euh, nous pourrions <coughs> aider les femmes économiquement parlant, le, permettre aux femmes de raconter leur histoire. <coughs> Tout ça qui fait partie de la paix et la véritable paix mondiale. Merci. Merci, Christelle, pour... Thank you. Involving women in peacekeeping, it's an holistic approach. We have the legislation, we have the advocacy part of it, and also coming from the family and sensitization of members of the community on the role of women. So we can't really focus on just the policy alone, but there are so many other factors that need to be considered in promoting peace. And, you know, if we consider this holistic approach, then we are on our way to ensuring that women are considered as the major key stakeholders in peace building. So we'll be learning more on some of this initiative from other speakers across the West Africa. But now let's move to the second presentation, if you allow me, everyone. Thank you all for joining. So I'll introduce our second speaker for today, who is from Nigeria. She's a representative of Young Female Advisors Initiative. Her name is Adora Oyechere. She will be talking on the need for support system to enhance the UNSR 1325. So Adora is a Nigerian broadcast journalist, extraordinary with uh, extraordinary and mind gripping on her personality formerly with African independent television called AIT in Nigeria, an intellectual forum on Kakaki, the African voice, other that deep institution held that wasn't existing before. She was also the producer and the presenter of AIT Gender Agenda, Africa number one premium program, detailing the issues from across Africa on gender on AIT. She's also a former senior special assistant on information on an advocacy to Honorable Emeka Ijoha, a former governor of one of the states in South East Nigeria. One of the top, she's one of the top 20 outstanding youths and the most recently chronicled by WAFA, World Affirmative Action Honors as amongst 100 most influential African women in Nigeria and Sub-Sahara Africa. She is a well sought after speech therapist and speech training expert after overcoming a speech defect herself while growing up. A two times Toastmaster International Champion, Sign Language PDF One Certificate and a Body Language Communication Expert. In her portfolio, she has tutored more than a few important personalities on speech training, which include Her Excellency Atta Mill, the Governor's Wife Forum Nigeria, United Nations Youth Associate Speech Workshop, the Women Community in Africa Forum Self-Development Workshop, Honorable Ministers amongst other. She is also the CEO of Signature Hills Media and currently the Secretary to the Africa Young Female Advisors Initiative. Adora is referred to as a passionary and a visionary. She is def definitive, intelligent, and remarkable 
people-oriented progressive tailbrazer of our time and in years to come. Our passion for supporting women around the world moved into starting We We Network Africa, an acronym for women and neighboring women everywhere in Pan-Africa media, branding and communications outreach with supporting mainstreaming women in different sectors using mainstreaming media. So let's welcome on the stage, Ms. Adora to talk about the need for support system. All right, thank you everyone. Good morning. Uh, thank you Abiodun for that um, introduction. I'm truly humbled. Uh, thank you for Cody Institute and all the other partners uh, that have put this together. And um, to all the participants and my fellow uh, sisters on this platform, it's good to see you all and join you in this forum. Um, again, I would also want to say that I will be using just my audio um, because my network is a bit um, inconsistent here. And so I want to maximize uh, what I would say by just using my audio. And I hope that is okay by the members uh, on this platform. Um, Again, I want to say, first of all, a great insightful presentation by Crystal. I think that was very detailed. And um, I took a lot home from there, especially in terms of localizing communication gaps, um, you know, uh, amongst member states and also other parts of the world. I would start mine by saying when we talk and when we look at the need for support systems, uh, especially from the perspective of the UNSCR one uh, 1325, I would first of all want to, you know, um, look at the, the conversation on what support system means to me as first as a woman and what support system means to me also as a citizen uh, of Nigeria. Now, when we look at the definition of support, it means to hold fort, to hold beer, um, to enable, um, to bring together, to, to offer, to offer some level of you know shouldering either be it you know in a domestic setting or in a professional setting in a political setting but in this perspective we are ideally looking at the issue of peace and security for women i start by saying first of all that when we look at the operational items in the resolution 1325 the broader call upon member states is first to address the needs of women and girls um, not just in armed conflict, but also support their participation in peace negotiations. And you will also understand and also look at in reflection of that, that the consideration was not just about looking at participation alone for the sake of participation, but also looking at addressing the disproportionate and unique impact um, of what armed conflict does to women. And also look at and also consider the recognized, undervalued, and underutilized contributions women make to conflict prevention, peacekeeping in, in especially, conflict resolution, peace building. These are key important conversations. Now, when you look at the local communities, you are looking at, for instance, like a country like Nigeria that has up to 736 or 740 local government area, um, areas, you know, in perspective, but over 700 in, in, in whole. And you are asking, how do we begin to localize conversations that have to deal with support systems that link the ideology and also the implementation of the reviews and the advocacy on women's participation in peace building, conflict resolution and conflict prevention. Now, I also want to say this categorically. When we are talking about the UNSCR 1325, I think one thing that I think we should take in cognizance and in perspective really is how women are represented and how those representations are maximized through support groups. What does support group mean to an ordinary woman at the local government area? How is the language of peace negotiation? How is the language of participation? How is the language of conflict re resolution communicated to a, a woman at the local government level or at the community level across Nigeria, across Africa, and across the world? Now, I say this in view because if you look at the 
if you look at the population of the world today, we have over 7 billion and counting. Africa has about 1.2 billion. By the year 2050, we are looking at over 9 billion people in the number of population. Africa is looking at 2.4. Now, half of that population are women. And most, at least 18% of that population come from sub-Saharan Africa. And so you're asking for us to detail and for us to look at appropriating the different platforms and also looking at involving the channels, the voices, the communication, we have to look at support systems and how we internalize them and localize them at the community level. What does a support system mean to a, an average woman at the community level? From the market women setting to the young persons group, to peer groups, to cultural groups, to training platforms, to the civil society, to the state institutions, to how they are represented across the civil service you know, st status quo, all of these conversations are some of the key details we should be looking at. Now, in effect, I think that the Women, Peace and Security Agenda of the UNSCR is also anchored on the principle of incorporation of gender perspective. And when you're talking about incorporation, you're talking about linkages. You're talking about linkages. Now, how do we link those conversations? We link those conversations by creating the enabling environment. How do we maximize enabling environment? By creating support system. Now, in definition, how have we and how can we use the existing platforming and also the engagement of the, UNS, the UNSCR 1325 and its determinant factors to increase women's support systems at the local level? For me, that is one of the key call here. And I say this because one of the issues or some of the issues we have seen, the key components and some of the understanding of the recommendations of the UNSCR 1325 are very varied. Varied in the sense that what can happen in another country that seems like the high point or the priority of conversation in another country might not be for the same in another country. What might thrive as the key conversations in Cameroon might not be what might thrive as a key communication line in terms of support system for Nigeria or Senegal or Gambia or Namibia or other countries or like even Afghanistan or other member states that we have looked at. Now, in terms of looking at issues, I think that one, if you're looking at peace, security, and conflict resolution, the first thing, the first corporates, the first people who are taught, you know, person um, um, recipients of issues of peace and, and conflict resolution are women and children. How do we look at their involvement by support systems? How do we prevent sexual and gender-based violence in Dans la création de ces structures? and support systems to look at the issues of conflict and take measures to protect women and girls from violence and armed conflict, particularly, particularly the most resultant effect of conflict, which is sexual and gender-based violence. You're looking at the growing numbers of SGBV in not just Nigeria, but across member states and also in countries who have not looked at the essentials and the priority or prioritizing the need for support system. And I think that this is the key conversation to have, especially as how we implement those ideals and the perspective of the UNSCR 1325 in terms of localizing our initiatives and getting more women to participate in peace resolution and also negotiation. Now, if you're talking about peace resolution and support systems, you're looking at how do we get women's voices maximized through local pouvoir faire appel aux femmes. Comment allons-nous écouter sa voix par son âme? Having platforms where they can get feedback, reviews and recommendations activated at that level. You're looking at how do we use the local languages, the culture, even though that some of them become stereotyped or some of them are stereotypical of the engagement of women. How do we lobby the engagement of even the men to begin to look at participants in ensuring women's negotiation at that level through the support groups? How do we itemize the needs and the priorities through that platform? And I think one of the most important things is to look at the fact that women's political participation, again, becomes key conversation in terms of increasing voices. How do we begin to increase the participation and increasing voices by maximizing the membership 
and the voices of those platforms who are in charge or who are in view. Because again, you must realize that some cultures are very frontline and some are not. You must also understand some communities are very open and liberal to engagement of women and some are not. So how do you use the frontliners, the voices that can become the activation platforms for creating support systems for women? And I think for me, these are the key ideas. How do we incorporate that gender perspective in which the UNSCR has demanded into creating support systems for women, especially in peacekeeping operations? How do we consider them? Est-ce qu'on les considère comme sur le Conseil de sécurité, les missions de, sé de sécurité euh, internationale? Comment est-ce qu'on les implique, les femmes? Comment allons-nous mettre de l'avant ces systèmes de soutien au niveau local? Parce que je crois que nos conversations est vraiment une approche du bas vers le haut et non pas du haut vers le bas. Et parce que ce que nous allons communiquer du haut vers le bas, peut être compris seulement s'il si y a euh, un écart qui existe. Et la seule, fait, la seule possibilité de rassembler les gens ou de rapprocher ces personnes divisées, c'est de permettre la participation de la femme dans, la, dans le monde politique, la formation offerte au niveau local afin d'équilibrer cette euh, conversation, euh, avoir de l'équilibre avec que les femmes soient présentes pour des conversations pour le maintien de la paix ou la consolidation de la paix, les impliquer avec la police, avec les droits euh, des hommes. Moi, je dis qu'il faut absolument aller chercher les réactions des femmes. Il faut évaluer leur participation. Et là, je le répète tant et plus, lorsque nous pensons à un système de soutien, de aucune façon pouvons-nous localiser dans des situations tellement variées, de différentes façons, dans différents pays, dans différentes communautés, en ne faisant, en évitant de faire le lien avec les intervenants qui pourraient prendre position, des, posi des positions d'inclusion de la femme au niveau stratégique, afin qu'il y ait équilibre qui puisse s'établir entre les opérations du maintien de la paix, des conversations centrées sur les rapports hommes-femmes, l'équilibre à apporter dans la représentativité des femmes. Et je crois, moi, par exemple, je viens d'un État dans le sud de l'est de, de Nigeria et nous avons vu au moins 16 communautés chez nous qu'on vécu le manque de communication parce que les membres de la communauté sentent que on n'agit pas de façon appropriée. Lorsque le niveau économique et la distribution des biens se fait dans un pays et n'est pas fait de façon équitable, n'est pas fait considérant la majorité de la population. Ce que nous avons, le résultat est une population appauvrie. Comment approfondir ces conversations? Comment initier ces conversations? Ça peut se faire uniquement par des systèmes de soutien. Alors, cela, il faut encourager l'expansion de ces systèmes parce que des identités clés, lorsque l'on parle des femmes, et de créer des voix à tous les niveaux dans les églises, aux mosquées, dans nos écoles, sur la place du marché, euh, dans les systèmes politiques, quand on a des missions, notre, en, notre engagement dans l'État. Je crois que c'est la seule façon que nous allons pouvoir harmoniser et activer les priorités des femmes, surtout les voix des femmes, les mettre de l'avant. Ce que ça veut dire, quels sont les moyens directs et non pas les moyens indirects. Je voudrais dire aussi que lorsque nous examinons des questions de activer les, les voix des femmes, il faut encourager, euh, il, il, il faut se défaire des barrières, il faut passer au-delà des briens. Je crois que ce sont des secteurs que je viens de mentionner. Et la seule façon de procéder, ce serait de donner à la femme, par la formation, sa voix, celles qui sont capables de participer, celles qui sont capables de faire le lien et celles qui sont capables de contribuer de façon 
exemplaire. Lorsque nous parlons des priorités, ce sont des priorités différentes qui existent. Lorsque nous parlons de la communauté au Cameroun, ce n'est pas la même chose que, que ce qui existe en Afrique du Sud, où nous aurons probablement des communautés où il y a beaucoup de stéréotypes, surtout lorsqu'il s'agit de la femme et des groupes ethniques et l'égalité entre les peuples. Alors, il faut fixer des priorités dans ces sous-secteurs ainsi que identifier les besoins dans ces communautés et de les activiter par des personnes sur le front. Est-ce que ce sont elles qui vont devenir la conversation, vont devenir les liens, vont devenir la conversation, vont élargir la possibilité d'identifier les priorités avec les intervenants de l'État et commencer à élargir la voie, les voies. Lorsque nous pensons aux besoins et lorsque nous pensons à ces euh, besoins des, des femmes et des petites filles, surtout lorsqu'on parle de la négociation pour la paix, je crois que lorsque nous allons localiser ces conversations, il faut le, le besoin de localiser est donc promu et activé en élargissant nos systèmes de soutien afin de faire venir de rassembler des intervenants afin de faire le lien avec les communautés et aussi élargir le besoin de les percevoir comme étant des priorités. Et je voudrais ajouter aussi que si nous voulons vraiment revoir la perception et repenser à la question de rapport euh, homme-femme, quand on parle de l'équité de entre les hommes et les femmes, Lorsqu'il s'agit du maintien de la paix, résolution de conflits et des négociations, le nombre de femmes n'est pas large. Mais je dirais, ce n'est pas une question de la femme seulement, c'est une question de l'humanité humaine. Ça veut dire des femmes qui sont des mamans, des mères, qui sont des femmes qui sont porteuses de l'eau, des femmes qui sont responsables de, du foyer, celles qui sont là pour éduquer les enfants. Mais il faut aussi, comme elles sont aussi le lien de communication avec d'autres facteurs existants dans l'humanité. Lorsque nous généralisons et lorsque nous activons et pensons que de façon générale, que la femme, la question de la femme est une question humaine de l'humanité, ça va se réaliser par l'actualisation des systèmes de soutien. Alors, pour moi, j'aimerais suggérer que pour les items et pour euh, cet appel qu'on nous a fait pour le 13-25, ça serait de nous aider à identifier exactement le type d'écart qui existe dans nos communautés locales. Est, quel, quel est l'écart qui existe entre la participation des hommes et des femmes par la participation? Quel est l'écart qui existe entre les liens des priorités et le lien que l'on fait avec les intervenants de l'État? Alors, j'ose dire qu'une fois qu'on leur identifie un des éléments clés, ce que nous devrions faire, et je vais dire, si on pense aux, à l'idéal qui nous est présenté par les Nations unies, ça serait d'identifier la brèche et aussi de pousser cette, cette narration. Ça voudrait dire que plus de plus en femmes au niveau local pourraient identifier leurs besoins par ces personnes qui se tiennent sur le front, qui deviendront des représentantes pour elles. Et finalement, j'aimerais dire que pour le développement durable, surtout dans le domaine de la croissance et pour écouter la voix de la femme, pour entendre la voix de la femme et négociation de la paix, il nous faut avoir accès aux trois P que j'appelle les facteurs d'activation de ce que nous avons vu avec les Nations unies. Oups. La protection, il faut... On n'entend plus. Et quelles sont les possibilités? Et c'est vraiment notre conversation au niveau des Nations unies. Protection, prévention et les possibilités. Comment allons-nous protéger sans qu'il y ait inclusion? Comment allons-nous prévenir s'il n'y a pas d'activation? Voilà pour moi les trois liens sur lesquels il faut insister et que nous allons pouvoir promouvoir par les groupes de soutien. Alors, si nous voulons 
prévenir, protéger, participer, il faut regrouper, il faut former, il faut activer des voix des femmes qui se tiennent sur les fronts, qui pourront être les porte-parole à travers de l'Afrique. Merci. Abby, I'm just going to jump in. Thank you so much to the speakers so far. Um, kindly remember that we have interpretation. Vous devez vous rappeler que nous avons l'interprétation qui a lieu. Hein? Alors, so, il faut faire attention de ne pas parler trop rapidement. So that we're not missing any pour ne pas trop perdre points. De, des points que vous apportez. OK? OK. Thank you so much, Eileen, for that. Yes. And thanks so much for to Adora for that powerful presentation and really opening her eyes towards some of the needs for support system for women and the role of different stakeholders in building support system for women, remembering that human rights are women's rights, media, everyone, church organizations, CSO religious group also have a role to play but most importantly is also giving women space at leadership position in those levels to be able to identify the needs for support system for women it's important because if women are in this position of authority at decision making platform it's easier to recognize and you know, identify when it's a need to build a post system and also the inclusion of women in peace and security. You can keep your comments coming on the chat box as we move ahead to the next speaker uh, because we are really running out of time and we need to keep the conversation going on a different platform at the website of Cody International Institute and also share your support, share your points and recommendations on some of this topic and the way you have localized the policy at the local level on the chat box. So we'll move to the next speaker, who will be discussing beauty resilience at the grassroots level. The next speaker is from Nigeria, is from the northern part of Nigeria, especially where we have issues around terrorism in the northeast part of the Nigeria. So it would be nice to hear from her how they've been able to build resilience despite the terrorist attack in Nigeria. Her name is Ibrahim Hadiza Bala. She's from Kano State, Nigeria. She is the president and founder of Women, Widows and Orphan Development Initiative, a member of State Accountability Voice Initiative. She's also the chairperson of the coalition of budget transparency advocates in Kano. She's the chairperson of Peace, Women, Peace and Security Network in Kano. This is a network really in charge of um, domesticating the policy within the northern region of Nigeria. She's, a, she's the chairperson of Gender Coalition for Access to Justice and also the vice chairperson of Border Tracking Group on that SABI DFID. She's the, North, she's the Northwest Zonal Coordinator of International Association for Small Scale Arts. She's the Northwest Vice President of Stand Up for Women Society. She's a member of Kano Integrity Group, DFID. She has won so many awards and she's also a member of Nigeria Stability and Reconciliation Program. She has spent most of her life building peace and promoting uh, peace within this region, within the northern part of Nigeria. Please welcome to the platform, Mrs. Adiza Bala Ibrahim. Adiza, are you there? You can unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Can you Hello? go ahead? Go ahead, please, and make your presentation. Good morning. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Excuse, mais c'est absolument inaudible. Abby, we cannot hear at all the um, the presentation, and there's no way we can also interpret it right now. We can hear you. Can you work on your voice? It's really muzzled. I don't. I don't know if she's covering up the microphone. Maybe she wants to log out and log in back. Miss Adiza, are you there? We can hear you. Can you make it louder? It's not audible. I think that must be a network issue. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, but you're not audible. <laughs> for Mrs. Bala to join us back and fix that connection. Adiza, you can sign out and sign him back. Maybe it will be better. I think it's a network issue. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, but Hello? just go ahead and speak and listen. Go ahead, please. Hello? Go ahead, please. Alizi. Adiza, are you there? Okay. Hello, Adisa, can you remove your face mask, please? It's on the chat that you will also put in a face mask so that we can hear you better. Please. Can you try one more time before? Okay. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, we can hear you. But it's still not clear. Can I go ahead? Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Let's see. Go ahead. Okay, we may have to ask you to log in. Can you log out and log in back and see if your network will be better? Okay. okay. Thank you, Ms. Adeze. Um, you can log in and log can log out and log in back while we go ahead with the presentation. Uh, 
Can we all mute our mic while we go into the discussion section? So right now we'll throw the floor open. Okay. And there is a, we can see you. Do you want to check your audio again? Or you off your video and just use your audio because of the network? Abby, there's, there's been some interesting comments in the chat that might be good to go through while you're, um, while we're looking at Hadiza's uh, connection. Okay. Did you want to go through some of those? Yeah. Okay, so I have a comment from the last speaker at the chat box here. Um, that talks about need to leverage an effective communication and feedback mechanism to reinforce the localization of the policy at the local level. Also, there's a comment from the Cameroon on the need for inviting Cody to apply asset-based communication-driven approach in developing the second national action plan should build ownership of the process as well as facilitate the localization of the NAP. Thanks for that. I think in, it's all, I think the localization um, history, it's all about using what we have uh, in our community to see how we can domesticate this policy. And the ABC that you've suggested is one of the approaches I think we can use in our region to domesticate this policy. So at this, Adisa Bala has her hands up. Adisa, do you have a better connection now? You can off your video and just unmute yourself. And let's see. Off your video, Adisa, you can go ahead. Off your video and uh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me? The connection continues not to work. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you go ahead? So we've had. Lisa, um, can you unmute yourself? We we've had um. A Ellen, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Abby. I think um, Hadisa is having a lot of trouble with the connection. What I'm going to recommend is that. Hadiza actually um, share with us um, some of her comments in, in written form, if that's possible, so that we can make sure that her voice is heard um, and we can use the discussion forum um, that's online on our website to continue. Um, we know that these are kind of the challenges that we have. Um, we're working globally and not everybody has um, good connections. Um, so I'm appreciating that Hadiza has joined us, but that I, I suggest we, um, we, we bring her comments in, um, in written form. And um, I'm just keeping um, mindful of the time. We have about 10 minutes left, um, Abby. Back to you. Okay, okay thank you so much, Eileen. So we could we'll just go ahead to the discussion section. Uh, you can share your thoughts on the differences in some of the approaches in localization of the policy at the local level in your region, some of the challenges you faced um, in localizing this policy, and also the strategies that you want to use. I can see Sharon's hand up. 
Sharon, you have the floor. Can you unmute yourself and make your contribution, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I appreciate um, Cody for putting this together. And I've taken time to listen to the conversations. They are actually very inspiring, very enlightening. I just want to mention that I, I agree with the fact that um, we cannot es essentialize on women because women have varying experiences that has been established. And then I want to go back quickly to uh, Adora's um, comment on the three Ps, talking about protection, prevention, and participation. For me, I think that participation is most important uh, when we talk about women and peace building. What we have been finding across the West African region is the fact that most women are not given sufficient space or they are not taking the spaces that have been given to them. And so it's, it's very difficult for us to be able to talk about protection when we are not there. It's difficult for us to talk about prevention when we are not at the table, you know, to mention some of the experiences, some of the things that our women go through. I saw um, Constance share the video with us on the um, Cody platform, and it was worrisome that men refused to come out to bury the, the, dead, the dead. It was women who came out and they were burying, you know, the people who died. That is traumatic. And if women will go to that extent, then women should find their ways to the seats of power too, where they can make contributions. That's one. Two, I was looking forward to uh, listening to Adiza on the issue of resilience. I think I have issues with resilience. Uh, maybe one, it's just another direction of thinking about resilience anyway, and that is open to um, this conversation. Maybe because um, the, 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 of the fact that the communities believe that women are naturally resilient. When things happen, we find our way to shrink back, you know, and try to pretend as if nothing has happened and try to live and continue living our life. Maybe that has been a problem to women. And so maybe we need to begin to uh, look at other possible concepts, other possible frameworks that we can begin to look at instead of resilience. But that, of course, may not be a discussion that it may, it may not be an extensive discussion for now. But I'm just thinking out of the box that um, if we talk about resilience, how people, how women have been coping, I know quite well in the northeastern part of Nigeria, it has not been easy for women. And one of the things that I was waiting for Adiza to mention is um, the fact that um, they even have emerging problems, you know, of um, women who have been exposed to insurgencies and all of that now coming back with pregnancy, coming back with children that the community is not going to accept. These are the challenges and many more, you know, the problems they have with the IDP camps and the rest of that. So I don't know what resilience will do because they cannot even return to their communities, you know, their, their, their original communities. These are issues that when we talk about the, the UNSCR, we need to look at it from the local perspective and see if resilience will not work for a certain community. Maybe something else will work. I just want to leave it open at that point and then listen to other colleagues. Thank you. Great contribution from, from you, Sharon, especially when you are, you know, against the issue around resilience, you know, from, from my own uh, observation or... Of... Dans ce type de résilience, de mes propres observations, de la recherche qui a été faite... Something, the wonderful experience I wanted Adiza to share on how... Is it... C'est une expérience importante de partager sur comment elles ont pu maintenir la résilience of victims of the Boko Haram terrorists. So victims of Boko Haram that, you know, that got released now got pregnant and had children for the terrorists. And when they got back to their community, a lot of people rejected them and they said they were the cause of the issues or the harm or the conflict facing them within their, you know, region. So it has to, you know, 
they had to work around seeing how they can accept them back into the community and seeing how they can also accept their children, the children of the terrorists back to the community. So it's about building that local actions and learning from those local actions for other regions to see how they can use that to implement some of the issues they have they're having across the region. So it's more about the approaches that they have. And I can see interesting conversation on the chat box. So you can keep your conversation coming. Or if you think you have one person contribution you want to make, you can also raise your hand up and we'll identify you and give you the floor to make your conversation. So on the chat box, I'm also seeing Excellent contribution from Sharon, who suggests the various concept we can raise our voices from idioma through participation and coming together, sharing our challenges in our local community that women peace builder, and also engaging the media. Great, great contribution there in the role media play. You know, the media plays an important role in helping in promoting some of these issues and concepts the women are using at the local level to bring about peace and conflict resolution. So you can also keep the conversation coming on Code International Institute website or on the West Africa Regional Section on some of your recommendations and strategies that you, you think we need in localizing the policy. For us in Nigeria, there has been some local governments that have been able to prepare their own action plan for the local government in localizing that the municipal level in localizing this policy using some of the five pillars of the policy to see how they can domesticate the policy across the region and i would encourage other countries around west africa to do similar in finding a way to put that policy in the local action and getting their municipal or the local government at the local level to also um, contribute to the implementation of this policy. So it's more than just having a national action plan as a country, it's more than that, but you know, domesticating the national action plan into state action plan. And it was during the process of developing the national from Nigeria that we are realized some of the issues the Northeast women are facing, especially the ones that have been suffering from the terrorist attack at the Northeast region of Nigeria, and seeing how we can incorporate some of their specific challenges into the action plan at the local level within their region. And Adisa has really played an important role in localizing some of this achievement into their plan as a local region. So thanks, another contribution for Marta. Thank you, Hope. Contribution, we'll continue to see how we bring women to participate in all areas of management. And that's when we shall be empowered. Thank you so much, Ada, for sharing your thoughts. And thank you to all our participants from across the West Africa region for sharing their thoughts on how we can localize the UNSR 1325, focusing on building resilience and support system policy and capacity for women to mitigate the conflict at the local level. There's a comment from Nicole about essential, essentialized women as a homogeneity, which is out of touch from diversity and miscellaneous in terms of urban and rural with old young women, educator, illiterate, and other intersectionality. Great point and great conversation around that. Understanding that women have different diversity. We have the young, we have the old, we have women with disability, and also considering the women with disability in any of our approaches, because we also have different needs that is different from other people. Women with disability, women with other sexuality that is different from ours, considering their own um, inputs and challenges in whatever decision we take. Mercy, in most um, space, we find that, that women with disability try to find their voice within the women's network 
He said they're not the women. The women are still trying to find their space at decision-making platform. The women with disability also want the women's group to recognize the fact that they are part of the women's group and they need to hear their voice. So these are some of the things that we need to consider when we are trying to localize our plans, think of our diversity, and also different peculiarities of women in domesticating that plan. For us as a younger woman who is into peace and conflict, thinking of the victims of Boko Haram, their needs are different. They were adopted while they were, they were very young and they were impregnated and they have, they have children for victims for terrorists. So their issues will be different from the older women who lost their husband to this attack and tried to, uh, trying to manage the family and the other trust. So the difference is clear. So we need to also think of the psychological support for victims of violence within the community and the local level, seeing how we can help them with different initiatives that we have in a way of building support system for us. So there's another contribution from Salah on the expert of women at the local level in security issue must be valued, acknowledged and built on so that the concept of women resilience can be fully developed here. Yeah. You know, there was, you know, there's this uh, saying that, you know, women at local level don't have that security skills and expertise, but, you know, I don't believe that. Everybody have their security instinct on how they can maintain and keep their family. And we've seen examples of this in different regions where you have security and conflict issues. And the able women took over, you know, the decision of bringing peace. Some had to use different techniques of even going half naked on the, on the, on the road at the public to show their grievances towards the issue of a conflict in their region. Some of these approaches and some of the things we need to learn from women, it has worked in some of this region. And we need to also learn how to use and domesticate these uh, approaches in our own region. So I want to thank everybody for their contribution. I want to thank the speakers and members of the planning committee of the West Africa Regional Section, the members of African Young Female Advisors Initiative, Mother of Hope from Cameroon, Women Peace Builders Network, also from Cameroon, for your time in planning the session. And I also want to thank my facilitator, my teacher, my professor, Helen from Cody International Institute for staying with us till the end of the section and giving us the platform to really share our experience on how we are localizing the UNSR 1325 in West Africa. Thank you all for joining. It's Happy such a great see, time, uh, you know, may I add a May I add a comment here um, just uh, with respect to Cody and follow up? Um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thank you, Abby, for, for leading this wonderful session today. Um, I, I do want to recognize and uh, acknowledge and appreciate some of the comments that were raised. Um, and in terms of Cody's um, engagement, there, you know, there were some very specific um, uh, requests that I think I would like to follow up um, with you and with the support of the, the Cody graduates that are on this call today. There's several of them that are here um, and see how we might best um, help to support or elevate some of the, um, some of the things that you've raised, um, especially with respect to Northeast uh, uh, Cameroon or sorry, Cameroon for sure. Um, the other thing I will raise is that there is the discussion forum that Abby mentioned. And it's always, um, it's always a, a question in my, mind, in my mind about how we can um, effectively harness the power of women globally to support us in the work that we're trying to do around peace building locally. So, you know, the conversations you've been having today about some very specific co uh, conflict contexts, as well as the broader gender-based violence that's happening, is something that people like me sitting from outside um, don't have all of the knowledge of, but have an appreciation for 
the work that women are doing in particular. So it's always on my mind, how can all of us in this network of, of women leaders globally better support you? And it's not just about doing the tweeting and trying to raise voices, we'll do that, but are there other concrete ways? So when you have a moment, please go onto the Cody site and share your, 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 your suggestions in the discussion form that's listed right below this session. The second thing is we are putting out, uh, and we just announced it yesterday, and it will be announced again today, um, a call for contributions to a publication um, on women, peace and security. And the whole purpose of that is to continue to elevate women's voices on the ground as local leaders working in this incredibly important area, peace and conflict. So please take a look at that and see whether there's something there that you would like to contribute. It is not meant to be a typical academic publication. We will have the space for that too, peer reviewed articles and the, and the like. It's about stories, it's about poetry, it's about the way in which women's lives are expressed. Um, and so it can take many different forms. And I would be thrilled um, if Robin and I and other colleagues we're seeing your contributions coming from your respective um, communities. So those are two sort of concrete things for, for follow-up um, that I'm going to just encourage everybody. And then finally, we have another session starting in just 30 minutes that is also focused on West and Central Africa. Um, and it's a Francophone session, it, but it is offered again with simultaneous interpretation in both French and English. And you're very, very welcome in that session to continue a conversation. It'll be led by um, Cody graduate and a fellow sister, Roland from Togo. So um, those are my three interventions. And uh, thank you so much for giving me that space, Abby. Back over to you. Thank you so much, Ellen. We've come to the end of the section. And we want to thank Cody for giving the platform to share her experience and thoughts on the localization of the UNSR 1325 in West Africa, and also sharing our thoughts on building support system in our local community, but most especially, it's about using our local actions, our local initiative to localize the global policy in within our region, and also understanding that we hope that's a, you know that we can leverage on as a low hanging fruit in promoting peace within our community. So thank you so much for giving on this platform. Thanks to all of us, the participants, the speakers, and our rapporteur. Thank you so much, Sonia, for keeping track of all the discussion. Thank you so much. Bye for now. All right.